or treat everybody, it's Dr. Weefer with another lab setup and review for your AP Bio class. This is the Osmosis Pumpkin Lab. This Osmosis Lab traditionally is done in AP Bio with potato. We are using pumpkin, of course, for the Halloween spirit. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you a typical lab setup, I'm going to show you some sample data, and I'm going to be talking about a couple of main points. First thing in the lab is we cut one centimeter cube pieces, keeping them about the same size. These pieces are going to be considered the pumpkin core, and we're going to get a series of them to do an experiment to find out what is the water potential inside the pumpkin core. Now, in order to do that, we have to discuss about placing the pumpkin core in various concentrations of sucrose. If we put it in a low concentration of sucrose, like a hypotonic solution, uh, the extreme situation would be distilled water. The pumpkin core or potato core or whatever cell you're working with, it's going to gain mass. You're going to see that as a positive percent change in mass. Hypertonic solution is going to be a greater concentration of solute on the outside. That's going to draw the water out, and we are going to observe that as a negative change in mass or a loss of water weight. And then an isotonic solution is going to have an equal uh, concentration of um, osmotic pressure on the inside and the outside, the water potential is going to be the same. We'll talk about how to calculate that in just a little bit. And we're going to observe no change in mass. So what's going to happen is if we place the pumpkin cores in various concentrations of the sucrose and then let it sit overnight and determine the percent change in mass, we can then determine when the pumpkin core is in the isotonic environment. We're going to find that sweet spot. And then we're going to calculate the water potential from the known isotonic concentration of sucrose and we are going to conclude that because it's isotonic it is also the water potential inside the pumpkin core. Okay, so we're going to set it up just like this. We have 0 molar, 0 0.2, 0 0.4, 0 0.6, 0 0.8, and 1.0 molar sucrose. That's the surrounding solution. And we're taking our equal size pieces of the pumpkin core and putting them in the tubes. Wait overnight, get the mass right now before we put it in, get it after a sat overnight, and behold, we have a percent change in mass. The percent change in mass in the zero molar looks like it's pretty high, and then it starts uh, gaining less, less, and then it does become negative, so it starts losing weight after uh, someplace between 0.6 and 0.4 is the area where it's going to be um, isotonic, but in order to do that, we have to, of course, graph the data. So when you set up your graph, you're going to want to per per percent change in mass on the y-axis. You're going to put the sucrose concentration on the x-axis. You're going to have zero percent change in right in the middle because there's both positive and negative. So here's your points right here. Now, when we do a trend, there's always a little bit of error. You may even have a data point that's way off as an outlier. That's perfectly fine, guys, because what you're going to do is you're going to use a computer program to estimate this, or if you're doing this on paper, you can get a um, straight edge ruler and just estimate the best fit line. So what we're really after is where the ice tonic is. This, don't forget, is no change in mass. So we have to find out where the, your data trend crosses zero. So here's our best fit line. It crosses zero right around here, and you can actually find out where the intercept is and extrapolate down and it looks to me about 0.45 molar. Uh, so it's like greater than the 4, less than the uh, greater than the 0.4, less than the 0.5. And what we want to do is use that value to determine the water potential. So the water potential is going to be equal to the solute potential in an open system, unless of course they otherwise state something about the pressure potential. But for this uh, sake, we're going to assume it's the same. We're going to assume the temperature is 22 degrees Celsius uh, room temperature, which is 295. So here's our solute potential equation, negative I CRT. And negative I is going to be the ionization constant. For sucrose, it's 1. And for salt, because it disassociates, it's 2. And we're going to plug in the 1 right there. The C is the concentration of sucrose, which we determined to be 0.45 molar. R is a gas constant. This is going to be the same for all of our equations, 0.0831. And our degrees Kelvin is 295. And what value do we get? We get minus 11 bars of pressure. Don't forget bars of pressure. This is the unit of uh, the lower the pressure, 
uh, the more water is going to flow toward it, right? So, well, so water, just like any other kind of pressure, goes from high pressure to low pressure. And you're going to see that the more uh, solute that you add to a solution, the more negative it's going to drive the number. Think of it as like a vacuum. The more negative the pressure, it's going to suck things in. Okay, so this is the idea. So just to review, we got our number from where the intercept was to be 0.45 molar. That's where it's isotonic. So the known is 0.45 molar sucrose. But we don't know what really is in the pumpkin. It could be sucrose, it could be glucose, it could be starch, it could be all these dissolved substances. But what we do know is it's isotonic. So 0.45 molar sucrose is minus 11 bars to, of the water potential. So if it's minus 11 bars, the water potential that it's in, that must mean that the equal water potential is on the inside. So therefore, all of that dissolved material inside the pumpkin cell has to also be equal to 11 bars. Now, a lot of my students think it's minus 11 bars here, so it's got to counteract and be plus 11 on the outside because maybe the minus has to counteract with the plus. That's incorrect because if, think about it, guys, if this is minus 11, that's plus 11. That's a difference of 22. That would be a crazy pressure difference. That would cause some serious osmotic pressure. We want to have a situation where it's going to be isotonic, so it's going to be the same exact water potential, minus 11 bars. So that's it, guys. I hope that you enjoyed um, reviewing the lab and I shall see you guys next time.